In this presentation, we will apply a customer credit to an invoice we will create. In other words, we will create an invoice and apply a prepayment or deposit to that invoice created within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We have the open windows open. To open the open windows, you go to the view tab, go to the open windows list, the view drop down, open windows list. What we're going to do now is we're going to create an invoice, but this particular invoice for this particular customer has a credit to it. So we're going to have to apply that credit and see how that is done. So to do that, let's review where we are at and how that credit got there first. So we're going to go to the reports up top. We're going to go to the company and financial. We're going to go down to the balance sheet standard, balance sheet standard. And we're going to change the customized reports to change the date range. Date range being 010119 to 123119. Then we're going to say, okay, here's going to be our report. So uh, it's as of 1231, date range being there so that we can drill down on this information and see the activity. What has happened in the past is that we recorded a received payment or a deposit. So we've got a deposit, uh, but a customer deposit for which we had not yet given the inventory. Again, in traditional accounting, if you, if you think about this, it would be called unearned uh, revenue, a liability, meaning we would debit the checking account and we would credit unearned revenue, some type of liability account, because we haven't yet done the work. We can't credit revenue until we did the work. In uh, a system like QuickBooks, as we've seen uh, in a prior presentation when we recorded this transaction, it's a little bit different. One, we debited uh, unearned funds because we hadn't yet deposited it, and we used um, the, the receive payment icon to do so. And we didn't credit the, the unearned liabilities because we wanted to track it within the customer receivables. So instead, we put it into a negative receivable. Let's see what that looks like and, and why we would do that. We're going to go to reports up top. We're going to go to the customers and receivables, and we're going to go to the accounts uh, receivable detail. So here's the account we're going to be looking at. So we have this uh, payment of the 250. Notice it's a negative in the receivable reports. The total receivables is 965. It should be greater by the 250 here. So this this number is actually wrong in in that the receivables should be higher and this should be recorded as a um liability for un, 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 for revenue that has not yet been earned unearned revenue but it works well here because now when we create the invoice we'll be able to match it out in the same fashion as we've been able to see elsewhere usually we have the invoice and then the payment invoice and then the payment in this case we're gonna have the payment and then the invoice but we, we still want to uh, track all that information on the customer balance detail. And this format allows us to do that uh, easily. And it allows us to use the same kind of uh, cells that we would be using or the same icons, the same forms that we would use through the normal process. So if we go back to the home page here, what we did to do that is we entered the sales receipt and didn't link it to an invoice, which of course, as indicated by the arrow, is the normal process. So we entered the sale receipt and now we're going to go back in time and we're going to enter the invoice related to it. So let's do that now. And as we do that, it'll, it'll ask us for a credit, hopefully. So we're going to say uh, credit invoice and we're going to put in Anderson guitars. We can do that with a drop down or just start typing in Anderson. Once we select tab, the field will then populate for us and we'll tab through this. We're going to say that the transaction is going to happen on the 18th. So we're on the 16th now. I'm going to say plus plus and bring it up to the 18th. And then we have the invoice a number should populate automatically. So we're just going to tab through this and we're going to say that the item the, then is going to be an ELP. So if I select the drop down, there it is. I'm just going to type it in there and it should populate for us ELP. Quantity is going to be one. Description has pulled over. It pulled over the uh, rate from, if we go to lists, item lists. So it just pulled that over from the item. Uh, and that's going to be the amount. It is taxable, meaning we're going to have sales tax on it. 
and therefore we have the 500 plus the 25 dollars which is five percent of the 500 so 500 times 0.05 five percent gives us the 525 so the balance is going to be the 525. now we already had a payment from this customer who had prepaid us and has a credit to that we can apply to this now so because they gave out a, a prepayment which we saw in our in our report over here we're going to go to apply credits so we're going to say apply credits and it says changes this transactions must be recorded before continuing so we're going to say okay yes and then it's going to go to this window where the credit is now here's the 250 that was paid prior that's the credit we want to apply so we're going to make sure that the checkbox has been checked here and say done and then it will apply this 250 so the amount was 525 the 250 had already been paid for so now it's 275. so if we think about this transaction of course what we're thinking is you know the, the customer wanted to um, buy a guitar say it was a custom guitar say we didn't have it on hand or we had to get it in some format uh, we then said hey uh, because of the effort we're going to put in here if you give us a deposit of 250 we will then go through the process of buying the guitar the guitar value or the cost is going to be uh, 525 after after sales tax and so uh, if you give us the 250 we'll go through the, the problem of or, you know the hassle of getting the guitar ready for you so they give us the 250 now we could then order the guitar in this case we didn't we could have an order or purchase order in between there and in this case uh, we, we received the guitar or went to the warehouse whatever we needed to do to get the guitar and then delivering it or now we're going to ship it mailing it with the invoice and we're going to apply out the 250 we have already received what the invoice is going to do of course is going to debit or increase the accounts receivable for the full amount the 525 which will leave something owed by this customer of 275 uh, because of that credit in the customer balance detail we're going to credit revenue for the 500 we're going to we're going to credit or increase the payable for a sales tax payable of the 25 and then we're going to have cost of goods sold or inv and inventory inventory going down cost of goods sold expense going up and those are going to be for amounts not seen on this invoice we can find them on lists items and we're looking at this elp if we double click on that it'll be for 400. so let's go through that process we're going to close this back out we're going to close this back out we're going to we're going to uh, save and close this item so we'll save and close then we'll go to uh, the balance sheets already open so let's take a look at the balance sheet and see what we have here we know that the accounts receivable should be going up so if we double click on it we see that it went up by that 525 double clicking on that there's our invoice now if we close that out close that out the, the second side is going to go to the profit and loss so if we go to reports uh, company financial profit and loss standard date range 010119 January 1st to December 31st we should have merchandise sales here double clicking on that item we have the uh, sales which are the 500 sales so if we double click on that there it is again this for the 500 not the 525 not including the sales tax sales tax is going to be a payable on the balance sheet so if we close this back out we go to the balance sheet once let's close this back out before we do that close this out we're going to go to the balance sheet in the open windows and then the liability we owe this payable so we're collecting the sales tax payable we haven't yet paid if we double click on that there's the 25. closing this back out we also have the inventory decreasing so here's the inventory we double click on that item it decreased but by 400 if we double click on that 400 there's no 400 on this form again why because it's on the lists and we don't want to give this form to the customer uh, with the purchase price on it so to find it it's on lists items and then elp is the item we sold and there's what we purchased it for so closing this back out closing this back out this form then still uh, draw, drives the amount decrease in the inventory although it's not on this form also note if you, if you want to see history here they've got this little item to help track the invoice as we go through this this is a newer item in 2019 so it's a neat feature to have in any case we're going to close this back out 
and close this back out. The other side is going to be on the profit and loss. And it's going to be in the cost of goods sold. Here's the other 400. Double clicking on that. Here's the invoice. If we close this back out, close this back out, back to the balance sheet and the open windows. The next thing we want to look at is, is the accounts receivable then. Here, if we go to the, to the customer detail, we go to the customer detail on the open windows. And we see that we had this uh, 250, which was a credit. That was the prepayment. That's matching up now to this 525. It's not exact because they didn't pay for the full amount in the deposit. So they gave us two, 250. We then gave them the guitar, 525, have not yet collected the 275 difference. That's what we invoiced for. And we explain, we hope to receive payment for the 7, 275 in the future. The last thing we can check is the inventory. So if we scroll down here and we say that this is the inventory 2512, we go to reports up top. We go to inventory and we want the inventory valuation summary. And that should be uh, for the date of, oh, let's make it uh, 1231.19. And so here's the 2,512. And I believe it was uh, an ELP that we had a transaction for. So if we double click this item and change the date, beginning date from 010119 then we should uh, see that transaction for the 400 for this invoice on the 18th right here. Double click in that. Once again, we're back to our invoice, the 400, not here because it's, it's not shown on the invoice, it's, but it is driven by this invoice. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.